Yes, I am. Matter of fact. <laughs> So, uh, thank you for coming. Um, it's a little less crowded than earlier. Uh, we are missing our dear leader who wants to come, but he'd probably drop by. So, um, this is the second trademark related buff today. Uh, basically, about what the trademark team does, what it maybe does not do at the moment, uh, and what it should do, and just what the what the outgoing strategy for Debian as an entity should be uh, with regards to granting trademark requests and also potentially pursuing uh, people who may be using the, our trademark in a way which we don't appreciate. So, um, same as last round, uh, does anyone want to start? Or should Brian and me just give a quick intro? Should it, could you summarize the conclusions from this morning both? Also yeah, sure. Um, basically, um, the rough consensus, I'd say, uh, is there need to be... Well, we all agree that there is official Debian. And we can all agree that official Debian is I take the official images, I install it on a machine. Uh, I do not enable backports, I do not enable contract, non-free, whatever. Uh, and when I install this, this is a system which has been... which is officially Debian. Anything else, if I enable contrib, if I have backports, if I whatever, uh, it's not official Debian anymore. We also all agree that there is Ubuntu and Mint and what have you, which are on the far side uh, and which are derived from Debian but which are not Debian anymore. In between, there's this field which we were talking about and it seems that the rough consensus is leaning in the direction of enabling other entities to, entities to use Debian name in some form or other, ideally supported by um, a test suite of some kind which can be run on a machine to see if it behaves as a normal Debian should, together with a rule set of what you need to do to actually be able to call yourself Debian. For example, if you want to install Fiverr, even if you go through all the tests, uh, you are not allowed to call yourself Debian anymore, obviously. Um, we also may need even a fourth category, which would basically be, um, because this uh, test suite and everything, uh, the assumption is people want to be as close to official Debian as possible, but they cannot do really official Debian, but they, they want to. So uh, this is in, in the included, and, and they are trying really hard category. And there's also people who may toss Debian on a laptop, install Skype, uh, install non free drivers for obvious reasons. Uh, and this is somewhere in between the I'm trying really, really hard and the I'm just Ubuntu and I don't really care about you, I've got my own name. So that's the rough summary I'd say. And in the second and maybe in one of one or both of the middle categories is some degree of oversight from the project or some relationship with the yes. project is probably wise as well. Yes. Yeah, I applied it with the test suite, but yeah, you're right. You should mention yeah. it specifically. So that's, uh, that's the rough uh, idea. So should the two of us give a short summary of this? Sure. You want or should I? Uh, which is that correct you have, that you are counting not to delegate? I'm not delegate. Then the, but then you need to update the website because mm -hmm. okay. that's uh, not, not documented. Not. Okay. <laughs> I can do that. <laughs> so uh, the other uh, conversation that Neil and I had earlier was that can you speak up a little bit because this is sure. really loud? The other conversation that Neil and I had earlier oh, was. Can you that just move up all of you because. Oh, yeah. You were sitting out. Uh, <laughs> just. <laughs> so, we were talking about uh, the dri one of the drivers for this conversation is that we want the value that the community is giving to this platform to be acknowledged as a contribution from the community, right? So we want to indicate where the source of value is coming from. Um, and this is important since uh, there's work to be done. Uh, there's going to be effort to implement this program or to define the program or to enforce the program or if we need additional marks, we're going to have to work on that. So um, anytime there's effort, there should also be a corresponding value. And the value is that uh, the market will become aware, more aware of the contribution of the community in the Debian form.
right, as opposed to somebody else's form, like Ubuntu. So just an important point, right? And we're not just doing this for random reason, we're doing it because we want to accrue value to the mark of Debian. So, instead of yes. some other arbitrary thing that people name things. Yeah, that's definitely one, one of the reasons. I mean, we also just want to protect users because if you get to call everything, or if, if, if you are too loose with, with the trademark at some point. There's uh, no assurance of quality. Yeah. And you'll lose the mark. Yeah. So, should we do this short summary, or do we just do this? Does summary? everybody know what we do? Like, trademarking? Should you just a uh, technical note? So, DPL is no longer a member of the trademark team because uh, it has been delegated. Here? Uh, I don't know. This is on? This is on? My laptop is still powered. I heard a fan go off. Yeah, yeah. Okay, just leave it. You keep the can you I'm going to can you keep taking notes yeah, and we are just choices. yeah, doesn't matter. Seems to be coming back. Uh, so yes, I was saying the DPL is no longer a member of the trademark team. He put up the old delegation text it looks like it hasn't been updated. Oh, on the case. organization page? Sure. The organization page is yeah, still we'll just, just make a note and we'll fix it. I'm going to yeah, let, the that's process not of fixing it. Okay. Because, uh, yeah, that is what I thought. Yeah. Um, yeah, so is it show of hands? Who thinks they're aware of what the trademark team does? Okay, <laughs> so we should probably. Yeah, yeah sure. Um, basically, um, Largely, in my opinion, our, our responsibility is to field incoming emails to trademark at Debian.org. What that means is largely we have a published trademark policy, which you can find on our website, where there's a lot of uses that are permitted, particularly when it regards to like um, merchandising, like branding, like t-shirts, cups, hats, these kind of things, where you don't need to ask permission. But there are certain cases where you do need to ask permission, and that email address is where you ask permission. And any questions about using the Debian framework are sent to that. A lot of uh, the re email requests we get are, can we put it on the hat? And we point them at the trademark policy and said, you're allowed to do that. You didn't need to ask, but thank you for asking, and such and such. Um, we're also responsible for advising the GPL on trademark policy um, and the project on GPL policy, and, but that is not a conversation we can make on our own. You know, it's, 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 it kind of bring some of the legal aspects of trademark to the conversation. Also, we do interface with, with lawyers to register, for example, the Debian trademark. Uh, which we should extend. Yeah. Which we should uh, yes, uh, we are also we, we have the Debian trademark. We are working on the .com trademark. Uh, we also work on fixing our registration for the Debian trademark because due to some bureaucratic mess up, uh, we actually trademarked Debian and Swirl with with Debian written below it instead of just a Swirl. Uh, this was yeah basically just. Yeah, but I mix up, but uh, we also need to fix that. Um, also, in theory, uh, we would be able to pursue anyone who is not um, acting accordingly to our, our published policies. But that hasn't happened yet, mainly due to uh, manpower reasons, both within the team and within the, uh, within the lawyer team. So unless we really take money into our own hands and, and put it on the table for some lawyer to take, uh, yeah. So before uh, the, the current two of you were active doing trademark stuff, there was there were at least certain cases where there was no lawsuit filed, but there were cases where, um, for example, somebody unfriendly had the Debian.es domain name, and uh, there was maybe even Debian.eu. I might be confusing them, mm -hmm. but EU, yeah, um, and. So I think they were even, I think they were even redirecting it to, of all things, a Microsoft hosting site, or maybe they included Debian and Microsoft, yeah. something totally not appropriate for Debian.eu, and um, 
I believe we did have lawyers help deal with them and make clear that we would be willing to pursue the dispute resolution process. I mean, that did not actually have to happen, I believe, but um, once they realized we were serious, I think we ended up having, I think we ended up having, they negotiated some small payment from us to them, but it was like a token amount, um, and we got it back. So the, a bit of that has happened, but yeah. it's never been to the legal law lawsuit yet. Yeah, but the point was that yeah. happened before. Uh, yeah. I know it happened, but yeah. that, that was before. Before the current setup, yes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So you definitely should register Debian by itself, too, without the squirrel. As a word, it already is. We do have, is? Okay, so we do have Debian the word yeah. mark oh, so registered Debian with the squirrel in the U.S. With the title so underneath. And yeah. some of the Madrid Protocol countries. Okay. Just the word okay. Debian. Yeah. But the official logo is not the squirrel, right? That's what we registered because uh, we agreed with the detail that that was what we most cared about. But it's only registered with the word Debian on it. Right, it's not it registered with us. We separately. have the word Debian yeah. and we have the swirl with Debian written So you just need it. to file another application for the yeah. swirl. But the swirl yes. was found too common, right? No. It was used no. 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 No, 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 no. But whenever everybody comes in and like, oh, I saw a swirl on like ketchup. Or it's a cynic swirl. This swirl uh, was not contested. We just had a request to write Debian under it for clarification, mm -hmm. and we thought it was just for, for basically naming the specimen, mm -hmm. but uh, the guy became part of the specimen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they drew it, they put Debian, they typed Debian on the bottom of the drawing. I'm a trademark lawyer, I yeah. worked in, and I used to work in the trademark office, so I've been a trademark lawyer for about 25 years. Unfortunately, on the drawing of the mark that was submitted, they typed the word Debian, thinking it was for clarity purposes. But as soon as you put anything else on the drawing page <laughs> of the mark, that becomes part of your mark. So yeah. it's very simple. For $300, we can just file another one for the swirl. The swirls are registrable under the U.S. Trademark Act. And as long as there are no confusingly similar marks, it's should be able to get a registration. And, and I did look at every swirl months. in the US right. database. <laughs> 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 yeah. So you're a swirl master? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I certainly don't know of any other swirl being used in this class. Right, right. as to for these yeah. goods. Yeah. So would, would my swirl and this is the reason that you would Is that infringing swirl? <laughs> We so, probably allow that. That's just going for know. just a second one. Probably. Um, <laughs> the reason uh, that the problem with registration is more one of manpower on SFLC side. Yeah. Uh, because we, we do get consulted for free, but it's uh, a limited amount of time. And they just basically, when, when they're busy, they're busy, which is understandable, but it doesn't, actually, it doesn't really uh, speed up the overall process. Right. I'm just saying yes. I can go back to my room and file the trademark application now. <laughs> Deal. Yeah. Okay? I mean, right. Yeah. I, mean, I, I can do that. Okay. Yeah. I'm perfectly willing yeah. to file a trademark application on any at any time yeah. that you guys want me to. Yeah. For nothing. <laughs> and I just wanted to point out, so this is one of the reasons why you want to do this, right? So Debian-hosting.info Right, not a Debian property, right? Not not affiliated yeah. with the community in any more of a uh, of an indication than they use the product, right? They have your logo and the your name, swirl, your typeset, right? And it's in their and the word mark is also in their domain name and branding, so exactly. we can already do that. We can and already it, do with them. No, but looks, the question is, are we losing with that anyhow? Well, yes, so absolutely, very much. much. Yes, because Wait. if you don't enforce it, or I let, I think All you right. probably... Well, basically, in order to maintain ownership of a trademark, you have to control the nature and quality of the goods provided under that trademark. Exactly. If you allow third parties to use the mark without con you controlling the use through a license, then it essentially becomes public domain. So, if you allow others to use in an unfettered manner, then you lose your right to challenge the people you don't like. Even if you let the people you do like use it in an unfettered manner, you're still you're letting it go. It becomes it no longer indicates that but this is a product of Debian. But as far as I understood, we just became aware of that. So we. The process starts now for us to defend that. Right. So now it's like 
Well, Start example, raining it yeah. in so that. Yeah. Well, and but you know, in this case, it's even aside from the legal requirements, which is certainly good to consider, um, it, if if you have a site called Debian Hosting as the main second level label in its domain name, you might actually assume that it's run by the Debian project in some way. Um, and if there's any problem with it whatsoever, or any shadiness or bad support, it might make users think that we're doing a bad job at something, even though we have no connection. Right. And usually when you have a registration for a word mark, like Debian, and someone puts it into a domain name, then you have a course of action to go after them. Oh yeah, we, could to we, could totally, we don't even have to go to the court system, we no, can use ICANN. Right, yeah. exactly. Or ideally, talk to them first. Yeah, talking first is yeah. Yes. Of course. Yeah. But yeah. the fact <laughs> the fact that we were able to go to for that EU, it's a different system. But we were able to do the European equivalent of that dispute process, gave us extra leverage, and we were willing to if we needed to. But once again, going back to original blog in the morning, right? What may itself call David? Yeah. I would consider the having such a website. A good thing for Devin because it increases visibility. As long as, as we agreed, there might be some kind of you know mutual agreement that yeah. they would be able that to use. That name is too generic, though. Like if it was called like Bob's Debian yeah. Hosting, or like you know, you know, uh, or like you know Sorensen Debian. Like if it was providing a Debian hosting service and did not have quite so generic a name and reached an agreement with us. Um, I don't see a problem with having Debian in the name if they're actually serving Debian and we have some oversight to some they're degree. Meeting all your requirements. Right, but, but if it's just saying Debian hosting, you would probably assume that it's connected to the Debian project no, as, I, as a provider. But the, I am assuming whenever it's Debian.org or Debian.net base, that's when I'm assuming it's connected to Debian. Whenever yeah, somebody you know more than most people do. Yeah, you know more, more than most people. So you and have if to they have a test of, like, of the average person. And if they are doing uh, things that are in the you project's interest. You know a lot more interest. about Debian than whoever is working about it. Right. And the it test would be, be the general be. consumer, not if, yeah. the if, super savvy. So if they are doing things that are in the project's interest, then they should be very willing to take a license to the trademark. Yeah, yeah, yeah I don't mind that. In that way, you're not, you're not losing the ability to sure. enforce the trademark, right? Yeah. You're yeah. not potentially yeah. losing the mark yeah. as an indication of source. Um, you, you know, you can have that conversation with them, but this, for example, is an unlicensed yeah. use of the yeah. trade. And, and, you know, yeah. It's hard yeah. to see you would want to license one particular site to be Debian hosting as opposed to Debian, like, as like you say, Bob's and Tom's and Fred's right. and whoever Absolutely. else is Debian yeah. hosting. Yeah. Absolutely. Because it does give uh, some kind Unless of they decided that, that they wanted to work within the Debian project yeah. to create a hosting service that's under the aegis of the DPL somehow, and, and, the, and you know, govern through Debian processes, that would be a different case. Yeah. Exactly. And then you're not into license as well. Then it's a different type of agreement yes. together. Yes. You have to consider your trademark just as important as, do you think Microsoft or Amazon or anybody else would be like, oh, someone else can use my name and... I guarantee without... you there is not a Microsoft dash hosting... <laughs> right. You should, they would be kind of like a little... With bug. the logo, <laughs> should we... See, well, we don't want to be like... like right, that, but, but, but you want to be able to say, like, do this, 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 yeah, and I, I think they all agree that this is a use which should not happen. Yes. Right. Yeah. Unless we permit. I don't think we would. Right. We're all the same. We don't shouldn't think permit we this. We would not. Current policy demands that they require, they ask us, and we give them permission. They're using uh, Debian in a top level domain. Yeah. They're using our, you yeah. know, logo. That's they're it. basically doing things that implies an endorsement from Debian, which is against the trademark policy. And I think in yeah. this case, we would at probably say no unless they rename it somehow. Like I, I, maybe a sub prefix or something. At least they list on the website Debian and the Debian logo are trademarks of software and public interest. So Good, they, so they, they know they, about they, us. <laughs> so they know they're infringing. So you can say, as you know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can also require that certain parties that you know, put in that you know, a certain yeah. level of font yeah. and yeah, yeah. prominence, saying who owns these yeah. trademarks. I mean, there is a way to host Debian that we won't get mad at. You know, but yeah. you can't be the Debian hosting place. You could be a Debian hosting place. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. I would actually think that was just the official Debian. Uh, you yeah. expect that they have the swirl there. If they have the, well, this is the official Debian hosting page. And I, I wouldn't even assume that info 
is unofficial because it's amazing how many consulates and embassies and things of foreign countries have weird .net .info .biz. I've seen this. It's bizarre. Well, sometimes the, the mark is owned by somebody else, yeah. or like there could be a Debian soda, yeah. or Debian's cupcakes, and I they have the mark first, so then you get met or. I'm just right. Oh, I would just make one additional point since I'm here, right, yeah. right here. Uh, with the licensing, licensing does imply that you have quality control, and it doesn't have to be like extreme quality control. But there may you may want to consider further down the line that you know there's a once a year check-in or some sort of like you have to send us a sample or check in with us and you know check these boxes once a year just to say that you're doing like an annual quality control. When, for quality the, in what context? Uh, first, if I'm selling a, a hosting service, uh, that this would be different quality control from selling baseball caps. Well, then it looks, so, I mean, it depends on the service, you know, appropriate for the service. So, is so it a relevant sure. measurement of quality for each type of License, right. licensee. Right, it would have to be. Okay. But is it sufficient for us to monitor how they are using what they are doing in respect of the, their use of the Debian name and product? Or would we, need, in this case, would we need to monitor, if we wanted to allow this, would we need to monitor how what the quality of the final hosting service to customers is? Whereas the. I think you would have to, I mean, you could do a loose monitoring of what like the end result yeah. is. So it's, you're saying you're saying it's up to us what the nature of it is, as long as we're satisfied that they're adhering to our idea of what the brand should mean. Right. Yeah. Yes, but then I think there should be some like either annual or some yeah, check yeah. back period, so yeah. that because the other thing is that yeah. you're applying your mark to these goods. Right. Then if some, I mean, for a hosting service, if something happens mm -hmm. and someone wants to is really dissatisfied and wants to sue. They're going to be, okay, this is a Debian trademark good. I'm suing Debian. So if you let somebody sell Debian soda and they get poisoned. Which is the other reason it should be you. a less generic name if we ever yes. allow them to do this. Like, so-and-so is Debian. Then they'll sue so-and-so right. more than Debian. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Although Not a lot of trademark happens, users, a lot of <laughs> trademarks don't do this. Like, uh, like um, I'm, I think, I don't... Think for, like, like, let's say, for example, that you're doing the, um, let's say you're doing something related to Android, and you follow Google's Android policy for displaying the robot on your website or something. Um, I don't think there is any periodic having a human look at you in any regard. Well, they probably should have some sort. I mean, of, like, they probably like renewal or. I mean, I'm sure they have the right to change their terms and have. And I'm sure they have the right to change the terms, and I'm sure they have the right to go after you if it, if you stop complying with. But I don't think they have a requirement that there's a periodic conversation, and a, and a lot of other providers don't either. I would think that they should, but it's it wouldn't scale. When, right, yeah. Uh, maybe you, well, yeah, the scale. But can, maybe you can answer the question though of when is it, when would it be allowed in this context as descriptive use? If they had a hosting service and they just say. We are using Debian, and therefore we're going well, to say that. Is that quite I was talking about using the robot in that example. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, say they want to use the Debian logo and have it advertised they are using Debian and put on the front page, not as their name, but on the front page. It's also copyrighted, by the way. Yeah, but I, that's why I'm, I'm not a lawyer, so I don't Oh, we, we gave a pretty permissive exactly. license for the copyright. Yeah. Yeah. So Android exactly. symbol may also be. I'm wondering if it's sort of certification mark or something. Like Trademark, that. I'm pretty sure. Okay. But I mean, if they could, they, are they would it be allowable for them? Legally, do they need permission if they just want to put it up and say we are using Debian and have a happy picture of a Debian as well? It's, it so, like, to me, it's probably a, it's, it's allowed. But. Well, I think for the copyright side, I think we ended up doing a pretty permissive yeah. MIT style license yeah. for the for the trademark you side. If it's a truthful statement, yeah. we're using Debian. Yeah. Yes, you could do that. Just like you say, we sell for as long as it wasn't an indication of the of the. Yeah. Brand of the provider yeah. of the service. Right, more where it comes into the name is the, the TLD is a problem, right? And then the and then the fact that they're using your logo type and you're using your swirl in their logo is a problem. Right. Oh, yeah. So, but if they wanted to say and we host Debian, yeah. well, I'm we not exclusively about this example. Debian, that's totally different. Right? 
Or right. if they have a listing of all the images that you can load up on their cloud and they have a logo next to it, right? Then that's true. Exactly. So since it is 232, I should ask, are there topics besides this website that we should talk about? <laughs> I was using it as an example. Yeah, it's good. Be instructive, it's good. Right? Um, I apologize if we... It's a good example. No, it's a good example. Do you want to mention the trademark you were working on? Uh, sure, what else? Step one. So we're also going to be... We're in the process of working to file a trademark for DevCon. And, and not covering the software class so that it could not conflict with configuration management software, but just a conference class? <laughs> we considered filing for... Uh, there was like a, a selection list mm -hmm. of uh, areas where the mark would apply to. And I think we left in software. So including the configuration management system? Yeah, just because it's basically for free and it was I guess. fun. <laughs> right. Do you use it on? Do you have examples of use on software? Yes. yes. Oh yeah. Okay. Every Debian system. Oh, or, and every Ubuntu right. system. There's a piece yeah. of software called DevCon. So, this is different. So, so, it's a play on words. Oh, so Debian okay. conference is also the Debian configuration management. Ah, okay. So Ubuntu so <laughs> needs to license that to Debian. That needs to get a license from Debian to use. Well, it depends on who owns the. Uh, yeah. We we are, in this context we are delegated by. By the Debian or by the DDL, but uh, the end effect is that SPI holds the trademark. Right. Because, I mean, Debian can't. There are historical reasons for that. Basically, Debian is associated in the US, and if you can get something trademarked in the US, you're pretty much assured that in almost every country in the Madrid Protocol, who signed the Madrid Protocol yeah. Treaty, they will uh, accept the trademark. I don't think the Debian US. has a location as a group by itself. <laughs> Well, yeah. the accounts they only have the logo protected by the Madrid Protocol, but what's about countries no. not being part of the Madrid Protocol? And you have to file separately in those countries. The honest answer is we don't really care. That's <laughs> right now. No, that's the honest answer. We don't have the mentor and we don't have the, the specialized lawyers in those countries. Uh, sometimes you have to have. A bit, uh, we, we try to pursue this at work for a trademark. Yeah, and I mean, for some countries you even have to have a local company to even register, uh, and then this company needs to be uh, majority owned by someone local to the country, uh, and not someone foreign. So this, it's just not worth it. As so, is, uh, according to Debian's trademark webpage, via the Madrid Protocol, it's protected in all of the EU, and China and Japan. And separately, it's also been registered in Brazil. Uh, so it was and extended to all those countries? Uh, yeah, extended via the Madrid uh, Protocol uh, to all those except for Brazil, Brazil, which is separately registered. Yeah, I okay. put the URL and the international registration sure. number on the, what we do. And, uh, oh, right, yeah. And it's, yeah, he, Jimmy is right. China, EU, Great Britain, and Japan. No, Great Britain's part of the EU. N the protocol not protocol-wise. Oh, really? Okay. It's not listed, but I believe you. Um, and uh, and I, I have taken a look at Canada's webpage. It would be easy to extend it there if we cared. Um, what about the convention countries like India? I, I just want to mention in many jurisdictions where we may not have a formal filing, we are we all are also afforded some protection under common law, where we're using it. Yeah. Yeah. We've been using it for quite some time. Yeah. And there's no one else really using it. In some countries. Sometimes some countries are first to file. Yeah. Some Asian countries. Well, we have the two biggest... Right. Well, two of the three... Two of the four biggest economies in Asia already right. covered. Right, yes, yes. <laughs> China is a gigantic. Yeah. Country. India and Korea are the others I had in mind. Right. So, I mean, if you know lawyers which work for free in India or in Korea, we can... SFLC has some small presence there, but they're also busy. Yeah. I can chat with our Indian associates, <laughs> but it's still like to work for free. Yeah. <laughs> Someone that... But, like, you know. SFLC does have a presence there. Okay. Like, Michi, Michi, Michi is licensed in India, I think.
Yep, we're good. So yeah, uh, SMLT.in. <laughs> <laughs> um, <coughs> now that you know what we do, uh, you have to read, sorry. <laughs> um, does anyone have some comments on if we do if we should do more or different things or are you happy or are we so invisible that you're even sure if you're happy? <laughs> so just as a point of clarification, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to step on you. Uh, just as a point of clarification, we should probably, so we have a registered trademark, it's the word mark. We, you're, we have a registered trademark that is a visual mark. But that's right. what currently only in the U.S. We haven't paid to extend it into Madrid because there's like a little glitch in yeah. that. Understood. Camera. And we didn't want to proceed with it. Um, yeah. Probably neither one of those marks or the third mark that you're talking about in DEFCON is really suitable to the program that we were talking about this morning, right? I think some people would say that the Debian word mark is suitable to it. Okay. Same as the scroll. Because if you control. Basically, uh, from, from the customer perspective, what you want to have is you want to log onto Google, Amazon, what have you, doesn't matter. And you want to select your minutes of choice because that's what you know and that's what you are. Sure. And it, as a normal user, what I would go for is the word Debian and the server. If, if I see that anywhere, that's what I'll install. Right. Without pretty much thinking. I'll check if I can install testing, but else uh, I'll just install that and come up there. Right. So I, I totally understand where you're coming from. My conversation earlier was we may need to create another mark, right? That is like a powered by or, or approved by Debian or something like that. That could be good. But just so should this be a trademark? And in its yeah, I was thinking right. that you could have something. Well, I was trying to work it through, like whether you wanted to have some sort of certification mark, like the Good Housekeeping Seal of Approval. But there's an anti use by owner, so you might have to come up with an offshoot mark. And I, I don't know how far you'd have. Well, so like you could have Debian. Compliance, or I was kidding with Brian saying the Debian swirl of approval, or some you know Debian little logo thing that could say you know that you approve of it. So as an example of that outside the cloud case, um, I was having a sort of variant of these two talks with someone downstairs before this, <laughs> and um, we were talking about the case of hardware with Debian pre-installed, and so in that space we could have if people wanted to define the terms. We could have a certified Debian hardware mark because we don't produce hardware and we okay. don't label anything as that. And similarly, if there was some, if there, if we wanted to have a mark that might apply to Debian cloud images that are not made by Debian, as opposed to the ones that are made by Debian, you know, like you know, Debian compatible or Debian or you know, you know, Debian friendly. Some there, 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 there could be a variant, right? If but I don't think we need it if they're trying to, if, from your first, if they're trying to get into the second tier from your ver, your fourth tier version this morning where they're trying to stay as close as possible to Debian and they're talking with us and, and testing and complying and collaborating, I think Debian is fine for that. It's more the third tier if we wanted to have a mark where they're trying for the base operating system to legitimately be Debian and not a derivative, but they're adding on other stuff. If we wanted to say like, you know, modify Debian, as a mark, or like, you know, uh, Debian Plus, or, De or that, that implies something different, but, you know, yeah. Debian with add-ons or something. That could be a mark. So, uh, my only just, point is... Just to come back to the original question, uh, for, for this uh, swirl of approval, would we need uh, to file for a new trademark, or could we just... Because you would have, well, you could just have a common law trademark, I mean, common law certification mark. You'd have to call it a certification mark because that so means you could not it? put the Debian seal swirl of approval on something that you make. So if you started making hardware, it's just you can't approve your own goods if you're a certifier. So you would file a separate application for it. Could we define the rules for certification and allow a different company as a certifier to certify us as compliant with our own rules? Like if we if we define the rules in a standard way, maybe we certify others, but we also allow other entities to do the certification, and they certify us. No, okay. So this would make more sense for hardware. Yeah. For hardware, totally, and for like vendor added on, like like Debian with add-ons, it could work for that kind of cloud image. It would only work for things that are made by not Debian. Right. 
Okay. And the only other caveat, if the, you do the case a of a cloud vendor point. wanting to make a new distro that's basically Debian with some differences, it could yeah, work. Yeah, and there could be a class of certification mark that if you jump through these hoops, we will stamp you. Yeah. You know? The only caveat is that you're going to have to have, you'd have to have really specific rules because if you have a certification mark, if you have a hundred rules and somebody, even if somebody you don't like. Follows those 100 years rules, then you have to certify them. Can you yes, we need to enforce yeah, them. Uh, so we, we, I think, we agreed to not call it a certification, but wouldn't it be possible to just have a, a version number and then they are compliant with version one, but we bring out version two in a year and then they are not compliant because we simply update. Okay, that's a possibility as well. Because okay. like if, if 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 we make a spec and they say that they're compliant with the spec and they're not, that's some problem about false advertising, right? So yeah, right. No, her point was that they comply to the spec, but not in a way which we approve of. That we because we forgot off. to right. right. We so forgot to say no spyware and right. they put in spyware. Or maybe the certification could mean that you, like, even even with a certification mark, like, if it's the sort of thing where this certification needs to be recertified every year, mm -hmm. and the definition may change. Yeah. Yes. And if we did that, yeah. and then if we forgot to do that, then if we add spyware to the definition, and then within the next year, yeah. any That's one, small, yeah. then, so that would also work with the mark. Keep in, right. keep in mind, though, that as long as you, as long as, so there's the work that you do to create the program, yeah. and then there's the work that you do to enforce the program. Yes. Right? And so you're applying labor to right. kind of fix this compliance. Which a spec wouldn't require, but we'd also police it less well. Yeah. yeah. So that's just Because all we could do if they were claiming to be compliant and we weren't is probably complain to the FTC or similar agencies, right? We couldn't do more than that. But if they're misusing our mark we could take more direct action. Right. right. So if so if we want to be able to do more than complain to regulators, we need to have the mark. Yeah. How many do you think are out there that are, like, how many people do you think you would either be licensing or certifying? What kind of numbers are you envisioning? For derivative product? Derivative yeah. software product? Yeah. Probably no, even less. Less than <laughs> half a dozen for the okay. near future, but I suspect that when, when more and more cloud companies start mm -hmm. hosting, um, they just pop up left and right. Uh, right. I expect them to, to multiply. Yeah, probably thousands. Definitely. Especially since when we have a program which allows people to use our name that does add value to their product. So right. all of a sudden, people will also want to get onto this bandwagon to also have the certification. No, not certification. Not right. could be. Right. Um, so yeah. uh, just for your information, the official part yeah. is over. I was uh, just going to ask one um, question. Yeah, but so I think if you, if you guys want to wrap up, you're free to, but we'll probably discuss informally for a few moments. But you're also free to take it, so you <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>